Welcome to our poster on impact of G quadruplexes on DNA double strand break repair by end joining. DNA is often exposed to DNA damage and resulting breaks are repaired by several different pathways. In the case of double strand breaks, three main pathways exist. Non-homologous end joining or MMEJ, microhomology mediated end joining or MMEJ, and homologous recombination or HR. In NHEJ, there is direct ligation of the broken ends using a repair complex, whereas in microhomology mediated end joining, there is a requirement for a microhomologous sequence, and in homologous recombination, there is a requirement for a homologous sequence as a template. In NHEJ, there is direct ligation of the broken ends using a repair complex that consists of two large multiprotein enzyme complexes, among other accessory proteins. The first large multiprotein enzyme complex is Cu and DNA PKCS, and the second is XRCC4 and DNA ligase 4. It is estimated that about 30 base pairs is required on both sides of the double strand break for assembly of NHEJ factors. G quadruplexes, or G4 DNA or G quartets, are hyperstable secondary structures that are formed in guanine rich DNA sequences. About 300,000 G4 DNAs can exist simultaneously in the human genome, often found in critical regions like telomeres and promoters. They have been shown to drive genomic instability by impeding DNA transcription and some forms of DNA repair. Deficiencies in DNA double strand break repair by non homologous end joining contribute to genomic instability, and the impact of G4 DNA on this process is unknown. We hypothesize that the presence of hyperstable G quadruplexes within 30 base pairs of a double strand break will negatively impact its repair by NHEJ. We are testing our hypothesis with the EJ5 end joining reporter system in which end joining repair of an IACE1 generated double strand break within the EJ5 sequence shown in figure 4 permits GFB expression. As shown in figure 5, in the presence of ICE1, a double strand break is introduced and when repaired by end joining results in the transcription of GFP. It is important to note here that the GFP positive cells represent successful end joining events. G4 DNA forming sequences sourced from human immunoglobulin switch regions S gamma 3 and the human PKD1 gene intron 22 were inserted less than 30 base pairs upstream of the ICE1 cut site to create G4 EJ5. Figure 6 illustrates the S gamma 3 sequence inserted into EJ5, and Figure 7 illustrates the PKD1 sequence inserted into EJ5 sequence. Cell lines with integrated EJ5 or G4 EJ5 were then produced through stable transfection into human HEC293 cells. The runs of three or more guanines are highlighted in the figures, and these have the ability to interact and form G quadruplexes. In the case of G4 EJ5 cells, which consist of either S gamma 3 EJ5 cells or PKD1 EJ5 cells, transient expression of ICE1 creates double strand breaks and repair by end joining permits GFP expression, which is measured using flow cytometry. Figure 8 illustrates the three predicted outcomes for end joining repair in G4 EJ5 cells. In the absence of ICE1, no green cells is produced. In the presence of ICE1, one of two outcomes is possible. First is that successful end joining takes place, resulting in the repair of the double strand break producing green cells, or the other outcome possible is unsuccessful end joining, possibly due to the presence of G4 DNA that would result in either dead or fewer green cells. This is analyzed using flow cytometry. Since G4 DNAs can decrease transcription, we are also examining the impact of G4 DNAs on transcription and therefore GFP expression post repair in our assay system. As shown in figure 9, we first plan on removing the puromycin resistance marker and then re-ligating the DNA to create puro removed versions of the plasmid and transiently transfecting this DNA into HEC293 cells and measuring GFP. Our preliminary data indicates that G4 DNA prevents cleavage by PSD1 restriction endonuclease. As shown in figure 10, 
Highlighted in blue is the PSD1 restriction site within the G4DNA sequence in PCR 2.1S gamma 3 plasmid. Figure 11 shows the expected restriction map of PSD1 digestion of PCR 2.1S gamma 3 in the electrophoresis image post digestion. Two of the bands expected at 1.2 kb and 500 b squares are missing. Sequencing later confirms the site's presence in the G4DNA sequence as shown in figure 12. The bands produced are consistent with the inability to cleave the PSD1 site within the G4DNA sequence, which is hypothesized to be due to the formation of G-quadruplexes. We found a significant reduction in GFP expression in G-quadruplex forming cells. A seven-fold reduction in GFP expression in G4 EJ5 cells as compared to EJ5 cells was observed as shown in figure 13. The results show statistical significance with p-value less than 0.01. We also found a decreased GFP transcription in G4 EJ5 cells. Our preliminary data shows a less than seven-fold decrease in GFP transcription in G4 EJ5 as compared to EJ5. This indicates that the seven-fold reduction in GFP expression represents combined reductions in both transcription and double-strand break repair by end joining. We interpret our findings as evidence that G4 DNAs can prevent activity of proteins that interact with DNA and can reduce the efficiency of double-strand break repair by end joining when G4 DNAs are within 30 base pairs of the double-strand break. Our immediate goal is to determine whether G4DNAs alter the frequency of inaccurate double-strand break repair. We also plan to investigate the impact of G4DNA stabilizing drugs on exacerbating double-strand break repair inhibition and the role of G4DNA destabilizing enzymes in aiding NHEG repair of double-strand breaks near G4DNA. Thank you.